in case anyone forgets his lines. How does it look? He'll get uh, the message. Uh, here he comes. Places, everybody. Quiet. Quiet, everybody. All set? All set. Yeah, yeah. When the light comes on, that's the signal, right? right. Good, good. Okay? Okay, okay. here Shh. we go. Never trust you again. You know, I almost forgot it was my birthday. Casey didn't. Oh, it was Mr. Hyde who put on the party. Real fancy, too. Favors for everyone. <laughs> ah, thanks, Dale. My pleasure. This is for you. Yeah. From all of us. Oh. Happy birthday to the fighting publisher of the Sentinel from the troops. Uh, there we go. Oh, boy, is that boy. beautiful. That'll be the prize of my collection. Ha <laughs> ha, you shouldn't have. I think it's time for you two to forget and forgive. It's not that easy, Dale. This is for you. He'll get over it. Now go on over and shake hands. You've made a mistake, Dale. The man is a guest in my home, and I'll be the proper host, but I will not shake his hand. Now, Brett, you're pushing too hard, Reed. Why don't you just leave, Rick? You've made a fool of me for the last time. Another challenge for the Green Hornet, his aide Cato, and their rolling arsenal, the Black Beauty. On police records, a wanted criminal, the Green Hornet is really Britt Reed, owner-publisher of the Daily Sentinel. His dual identity known only to his secretary and to the district attorney. And now, to protect the rights and lives of decent citizens, rides the Green Hornet. You were pretty angry. I wasn't that angry, Frank. Sure, I was annoyed that Wreck was here, but I was in complete control of myself. Britt, as a friend and as a public official, I suggest you get a lawyer before you talk any more about it. The witnesses have been dismissed, sir. Thanks, Hodges. Well, I guess we better get downtown, too. Frank, I didn't kill Eddie Wreck. There are two things you're going to have to face up to. One, Many witnesses will swear to the jury that you were holding the death weapon when it was fired. I didn't fire that gun. It, it just went off. Yeah, while you were holding it. And two, it's common knowledge that you fired Rick when you caught him sabotaging his circulation deliveries. Now, there was bad blood between you and him, and the state can make a pretty good case out of that. I'm telling you I did not fire that gun. Britt, I strongly advise against that line of defense. Okay. There's only one person that can help me now. Who? The Green Hornet. What are you talking about? I'm leaving. Now, just a minute. Britt, I can't give you any special privileges. Don't make it any more difficult than it is. Frank, I am fighting for my life. Don't try and stop me. Now, arms up.
worse trouble now. Where do we start? First, I have to find out how it was done. The secret must be in that gun. I should have examined it immediately. You can walk into the police station and take it? No, but I'll tell you who can. The Green Hornet! to look like we're in here to break out a prisoner. I'll try to find the gun. will make their delivery time. Just put some heat on the composing room. Mr. Hyde, this is a disgrace. The cold-blooded killing took place in the Sentinel publisher's living room as he fired a fatal shot at the unarmed rack who had come to the party to patch up differences with his former employer. You can't put this in the Sentinel. You think I want to print this story? Then don't! We've got to. This is the toughest story I've ever had to write but it contains the facts as they happened. But you make it a foregone conclusion that Mr. Reed is guilty even before he has a trial. Then in desperate escape, Reed attacked the DA Scanlon and fled under a hail of police bullets. You're using his own newspaper to convict him. You think I've forgotten what I owe Britt Reed for giving me a start again? You think I like running this story? Yes, I do. I think you're using your position as temporary publisher to let go with your true feelings. I think you hate Mr. Reader. You wouldn't be doing this. And you hate him because your paper couldn't compete with the Sentinel, and that's why it went under. If there was a shred of mitigating evidence, I'd print it in ten-point red type. But there isn't. You say the story is rough because of your feelings, Mr. Reed. But wait till you see how the tabloids treat it. These are the facts, pure and simple, and we've got to put them in the Sentinel. This is going to put him in the electric chair. Couldn't you bury the story somewhere in the back pages? Let me have it. I, uh... I'll try and tone it down. I don't know a thing more than I did, Cato. The mechanism on that gun worked perfectly. Only it felt different, lighter. All that for nothing. Do you remember if there was a cartridge clip in that gun when I opened the package? No, I didn't take a good look. I was getting refreshments. If there was a clip, it wasn't in the gun and it wasn't listed on that evidence ticket. Dale Hyde took the gun away from you right after it fired. He also gave it to me. <laughs> I can't believe Dale would do something like that. He's still the number one suspect. Or somebody's trying to make it look that way. Let's find out, Cato. All transportation depots are being closely watched by police lest Reed attempts to leave the country. Police are confident the young publisher is still in town and feel his capture is imminent. Put that on page one. That sounds like page one stuff to me. Britt, what are you doing here? Are you turning yourself in? No, not yet. I'm trying to find out what really happened at that party. I, uh, I hope you don't mind my using your office. I thought I could work better here until you get back. If I get back. Dale, tell me, where did the gun come from? Apollo Sporting Goods, right here in town. 
We all thought it would make a fine addition to your gun collection. Could someone have tampered with it? Possibly. It was bought at the store and a messenger delivered it. Miss Case wrote the note on the card and took it to your house. The police are checking out the store in the morning. Dale, that gun was fired by remote control. Sounds a little like science fiction to me. Uh, how could that be done? I don't know yet. Do you remember if the gun felt odd to you when you grabbed it from me? Well, I wasn't paying too much attention to it. I, I was more concerned about Eddie Wreck. When I held the gun, it felt like it had a fully loaded clip. It could have contained an automatic firing device. Well, if it did, ballistic should have it. That's right, they should. But do they? Rit. Give yourself up. You're just getting in deeper trying to investigate this yourself. Let me do it. We'll have the entire paper at our disposal. Now, we've been friends too long for me to stand by and see you destroy yourself. Dale, if I turn myself in, I may be in for good. Now, you've put me in a very difficult position coming here. All right, all right, I'll leave. Dale. Do me one last favor. Call the police as though you're following through on the story. See if the clip was picked up with the gun. All right, Britt. Where can I reach you? I'll be at the commercial cleaning plant on 58th Street, near the loading dock. Meet me there in two hours. I'll find out what I can. Thanks, Dale. Good luck. Get me the police, quickly. Now, this is important. Listen closely. If you want to find Britt Reed, he'll be at the commercial cleaners on 58th Street at 3.30, near the loading dock. But never mind who this is, just be alert. He's armed and dangerous. too much time. I just want to ask you a favor. Just name it. Britt Reed. What about him? No shooting. Well, I can't do that. Our information is that he's armed and dangerous. Lieutenant, every time there's a case like this, we receive all sorts of crank calls, and that's probably all it was. Well, it may be so, but we still have to check it out. Now, Reed shot and killed a man tonight and broke arrest. Now, in my book, that makes him doubly dangerous and my officers have been instructed to act accordingly. Your job is to bring a man in for trial until he's been tried and found guilty. I don't think it's very wise to just flatly say that he killed a man. Now look, Frank. Now, when you face these guys, huh? they're in a courtroom, handcuffed and guarded by my men. When we face them out in the street, we have no idea whether they have an intent to kill or not. And I can't walk up to them and offer to shake hands, you know. Tony, I've known Britt Reed a long time. I can't believe that he'd kill anybody in cold blood. Now look, this is something you know just as well as I do. That the majority of murders are committed by someone who is closely related to or very well known by the dead person. Or a business associate they had an argument with. Now whether that business associate is a, is a steel worker or a newspaper man, huh? Oh, and let me tell you something else too. If Britt Reed is at the commercial cleaners and he resists arrest, my men have instructions to act accordingly. I have said that twice. What does it mean? It means we're going to get him one way or the other. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. You're walking right into a trap. We don't know for certain that Dale is responsible. We don't have any proof. This is no way to find out. What other choice do I have, Cato? I know I didn't pull the trigger, even though it appeared I did. And Dale might be just as innocent. If we're walking into a trap, I'll have to get myself out of it. I'll be no worse off than I am now. At least we'll know for certain that Dale is the man.
high and walk this way. Don't try it, Reed. There's no way out. All right, take two men around the other entrance. You, come in the alley. must have been delayed. Well, now we know he's the man. How are you going to prove it? There was a clip in that gun. I'd stake my life on it. You just did. But where is it now? Somebody must have seen him dispose of it. Drive to Miss Case's apartment. <laughs> Yes, but I need your help. Anything, Mr. Reed. Try to remember everything that you saw at that party, in every detail. As you were opening your present, you turned and you saw Eddie Rack. Then Dale gave Eddie his favor. Do you remember what it was? A little transistor radio. Good. Then what? Then the gunfire. Try to remember everything that happened from there on. Dale took the gun from you and knelt down beside Eddie. Then he turned his back. Then? Then he, he gave the gun to Mr. Scanlon. Yes. I went upstairs to get a first aid kit, just in case Eddie wasn't dead. What was Dale doing? He was on the phone. <gasps> then he put something into the flowers on the bar. But I couldn't see what it was. Then let's find out, Cato. <laughs> Speak softly. The police are still watching the house. Looks like some kind of electronic equipment. And it could trigger the firing mechanism. Well, what made it fire at Eddie Rack instead of somebody else? I want to check one more thing. Then I'll give myself up to the district attorney right here. Hyde can deny everything. How can you prove he knew anything about it? If I'm right, I'll make him admit it in front of witnesses. And now, lady and gentlemen, we shall reenact the crime. You'll notice I did not say accident. Here's the murder weapon. There's a shell in the chamber, just as there was when I opened the present. But it's not exactly the same. I'll need the magazine clip. all about. Please, will you let him finish? Dale, will you please stand over there where Eddie Rex stood? Sure. Thank you. Now, I'll position the gun here on the table to eliminate any chance for human error. Now walk towards me. 
Wait just a minute. I forgot something. You had just given Eddie Wreck a favor. Do you remember what it was? Not offhand. Hmm. I believe it was a small transistor radio. It should be here in Eddie's effects. Yes, here it is. Now walk towards me. Say, what is all this? I'm not on trial here. Uh, we just want your help, Mr. Hyde. Do you have any reason for not giving it? Come all the way, Dale, as if you were going to shake hands with me. Oh, this is ridiculous. I'll show you why you had a change of heart. Because you knew if you got any closer, the gun would go off. This radio contains a small electronic transmitter. When it's brought close enough, its signal will fire the gun. I don't know what you're talking about. Then I'll demonstrate. Only this time, the gun was loaded with a blank shell. You should have kept walking, Dale. I would have had a hard time proving it was you who killed Eddie Reck. Put the gun away, Dale. I don't take orders from you anymore. This case, you're going to be my ticket out of here. Don't move. You're going with me, Miss Case, to make sure I get out of here. I'll kill the first person who tries to stop me. Let's go. Go ahead. I think Dale Hyde would be grateful to Mr. Reed for giving him a job. No, apparently not. This paper went under because it couldn't compete with a Sentinel, but he never saw it that way. He was going to take over the Sentinel any way that he could. He came pretty close, too. Uh, Britt, uh, just as a matter of interest, what kind of a story would you have written? I would have put the facts on page one. But there are a number of ways of presenting the facts. Hyde's way is to try the suspect in newsprint. That way, it's impossible to get an unbiased jury. Britt, are you going to write the story on Dale? <laughs> no, Mike. You write it. It won't be easy to write it the way it happened without convicting him. Good luck. You know, for a moment there, I thought I was on my way to Brazil with Dale. You've been complaining you wanted a vacation. Yes, how about it? You've got it. On the way to the office, take a whole hour for lunch. Thanks. <laughs>